speaking one natural language patterns for RDF predicates. Okay. So thank you. Um, again, my name is Daniel. I'm from uh, the University of Leipzig at the research group AKSW, and I want to present to you the uh, the BOA project, which is, which is an acronym for bootstrapping linked data, and in particular, the joint work I did with uh, Axel Ngonga, which is called Extracting Multilingual Natural Language Patterns for RDF Predicates. So what's our motivation? Um, if you look at the linked open data cloud, there is mostly all knowledge bases are basically uh, extracted from this semi-structured or structured data. So, and this uh, says that there is only 15 to 20 percent of the knowledge available in the web is so far, or can, can, can be extracted so far. So we've looked for a way to uh, have a, to make the conversion of, uh, possible from the semantic web to the document web and maybe also back. So the question was, how can we extract the data from the document-oriented web? And uh, we uh, developed this uh, distant bootstrapping approach where we have, for example, the knowledge here in uh, DBP there, for example, where you have this uh, resource by Barack Obama and you can uh, see where he was born, which political party he's in, and his uh, wife. Then you can use this knowledge to find sentences on the web where both of those um, uh, resources appear, and then you can look at uh, the the string which is been, uh, be between those entities, and those are those strings represent the formal predicates. So, for example, you have like two uh, two of those sentences hold true, but the last sentence here is uh, wrong since Obama uh, married Michelle in '92. Uh, so there's obviously uh, a need to filter out the good and the bad patterns. So once you found the patterns, then you can look again for sentences which contain the patterns. And if you're lucky, then you can extract the entities in the sentence. And then uh, if you have extracted the entities, you can create uh, RDF out of it and publish it again into the into the LD cloud. So this is the approach we developed, and uh, the first part of it is you need to have some sort of some sort of text where you uh, where you run your queries on, and we extract uh, we implemented a corpus extraction module uh, which crawls the web. You, you you can specify which part you want to crawl, and then you have to apply certain cleaning methods for, uh, I don't know, example, removing HTML files, uh, HTML markup, and then you have to index it with Lucene or something like that, and you end up, you end up with a corpus where you run your stuff on. Second thing, you need to have the training data available, which can easily be uh, gathered from the linked open data cloud with a Sparkle query. And uh, the next thing is you, we want to have higher recall since if you only search for a term like Barack Obama, this might only get you like 50% of the mentions on, of him on the web. So if you have surface forms where you also have his middle name or his in initial of the middle name, then you will get very high recall. So if you have the surface forms, the background knowledge and the text you can, uh, you, in the text, you can apply uh, the pattern search, and you can filter out uh, obviously uh, wrong wrong patterns. Then, if you've uh, done the if the searching part is done, then you can filter again on uh, other statistics, and the remaining patterns then can you you, you apply a feature extraction algorithm. Uh, or multiple feature extraction algorithm on the remaining patterns. And if that's done, we apply this machine learning technique. In our case, it was a neural network, and we've extended it now to uh, any possible machine learning tool. And with those, with those scored patterns, we are then able to search them again in the text corpora 
and uh, generate then the RDF then. So in the next part, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on the steps four to eight, and I will skip one and two and three. So the pattern search basically works as this: you have a set of entities S and O, which are connected through this property, and then we find all sentences which contain the labels of uh, the resource S and O, which are connected through P, and then we replace the entity labels with a placeholders. In this uh, particular case, I choose the D and R, which basically stands for the domain and range of this property. So we call a pattern then something like oh sorry something like this on the left side, where D stands for domain and this wife R, and then uh, we aggregate them to pattern mappings, which uh, are those uh, formal relations and uh, a set of those patterns. So if we have those patterns, then we can apply the feature extraction, and there we have uh, feature extraction algorithms which are language independent, like um, the support. So let's uh, say, for example, we have uh, the formula relations subsidiary from DBpedia, and we have uh, this natural language representation of this. Uh, predicate, then we can look at the support. So, how many different uh, how many different entity pairs have we found, and also um, what's the maximum number we found one single entity pair? Of, for example, four here, and then we have like the specific uh, specificity feature, which says a pattern is uh, better a pattern is better if it's learned from uh, less relations, so uh, is part of, is, uh, has been found in two different relations, so it might not be as good as a more specific one. And then we can also apply the typicity pattern, uh, the typicity feature, where we do, where we uh, nerd tag a sentence, and then we can look at the arguments of uh, was acquired by, and we see to the left side that there is an organization, and to the right side there is an organization, so this pattern fits uh, to the domain and range restrictions of the formal relation. And then there are the language dependent uh, feature extraction algorithm. There is, a, this is called, this is nothing we developed, this is a metric we use, it's an intrinsic information content metric and this is based on WordNet. So we query the labels, we query for the labels of the predicates and then we ran um, uh, semantic similarity uh, measure between the tokens of the pattern and the tokens of the label of the predicate. And then we get a score and then we can see this uh, relates to the pattern, uh, to the property or not. And then there's also the reverb, uh, okay. There's also the, um, the reverb metric from, uh, uh, the guys from Washington. So I'm going to skip that. Then we uh, we trained this. We manu we manually annotated 200 patterns with uh, two authors, and then we uh, um, score. Uh, we, we we fed the knowledge into this uh, neural network, which had up to 18 features depending on the language. We uh, did it for German and English, and then we have this. Uh, then we can score the patterns accordingly. So um, if we have the scored patterns, here's this uh, with a swipe is a good pattern for, um, um, for the sparse relation. So we can find sentences with this pattern. Then we uh, run the nerd tagging or a post tagging, depending on which algorithm you want to use. And then we can extract, there, is, uh, there are two entities here. Um, which we can attach the labels also in the specific language. And we can say uh, those entities are persons since the domain and range from the uh, spouse relation is specified. And then we can connect the two entities. And so we created like uh, four new resources or four new statements from the single uh, thing. So the evaluation we did was on four different data sets. We used 
uh, two Germans and two English data sets. Uh, the, both of them, both in which uh, language was uh, the English and the German Wikipedia, and an English and uh, German news data set, which was derived from 2005 to 2011, and they are approximately of this size. There are 58 million sentences in the English wiki compared to 24 million sentences in the German wiki and 240 million in the English newspaper and 120, uh, 112 million sentences in a German newspaper. So um, what we found here is that we can extract uh, more, uh, approximately double uh, pattern mappings from the English than from the German, and we find less pattern mappings uh, in the English and the German uh, news uh, corpus. And um, we found, uh, I mean, basically the uh, algorithm worked best on the English uh, Wikipedia, and uh, we have achieved for both German and the English Wikipedia uh, a precision rate of over 90%, and the precision rate on the news uh, corpora was not as good since the DBP relations don't really uh, are not really expressed in, in news text. So um, to conclude my talk, uh, we've developed a framework where you can extract RDF from, from free text and you don't need to create a special ontology. You can use the, uh, the thing which is already there. We have shown that we, can, that we have uh, precision for over 90% for German and English. Uh, you can also use the, uh, the patterns we've extracted on Wikipedia and apply them on any other different text. We uh, uh, have higher recall now through those surface forms, and you can easily output uh, or integrate the, uh, the RDF you've ex extracted into the LOE cloud. So you can also use the knowledge you've extracted from the text to feed it into your uh, algorithm in the next iteration. And we've created a library which you can, which you can download where you can uh, query those natural language re representations. And there is also a, a demo available where you can have a look at this library. And yeah, that's it. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'm just, uh, what are your patterns could be used also for, uh, for another job, that of uh, uh, making some natural language access, uh, natural language queries to uh, datasets? Uh, we've we've uh, kind of done that already. We have uh, implemented uh, a tool which uh, does question answering. So you have a natural language question, and you can look for uh, like patterns inside that natural language question, and then you can map it to the to the predicate, and then you can answer. Uh, you can try to answer the question. Yeah. We also uh, um, we also apply a framework where you find evidence for a given fact. So if you have a given fact like the Barack Obama and the spouse relation, you can look uh, for text on the web and find provenance for that for that fact, or you can in, in, invalidate the fact if you don't. So there was a challenge at, uh, last year that we did about that. About what? On, uh, on uh, natural language access, uh, to, uh, uh, it could be interesting to you if you do know it. Uh, the what do you mean, the QID benchmark? Or? It was about the uh, um, uh, cleaning all the leaked data based on natural language. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Reverb? Reverb? Yes, I Yeah, uh, I needed to skip it a little bit because of the time. Um, it's a feature. They, they use, do, do you know what Reverb does? OK, we, we just use uh, the feature as one feature of a neural network. And usually, um, 
if, if we get a reverb score for a given pattern, then this highly indicates that this is a good pattern. Since they, 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 they have this post tag sequence, and a pattern which has this post tag sequence is a, a very good pattern. Yeah, we're using their confidence score. We haven't done anything else. Any other big questions? Sorry, I might have missed this, but what's the reasoning or the investing in why there was such a big difference between the days and the weekly? Yeah, we, sure. We have, um, I mean, it's, it, 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 mm -hmm. it's definitely hard to measure. Um, but um, since I worked on a news data set now a little further, there's, um, there, nobody says anything about birth date in news. Nobody says anything about, I don't know, um, there, th let's just say it otherwise, there is a hard correlation or a strong correlation between DBpedia and Wikipedia. And if you use the DBpedia data set on a totally different uh, text, then you get different results and they're not as good. It's uh, hard to remember. I mean, um, two things. First, you can still use the patterns extracted from Wikipedia on other text. I think they're pretty good and they're OK. <coughs> and second, we are working now on, since this is, um, you need to have background knowledge for this approach. And now we're working, I, I, I'm currently working on an approach with, which uh, uh, works without background knowledge. So, and we uh, extract the knowledge and then we map it back to uh, the predicates uh, found on the web so far. Yeah. Thank you again. I, th I, I think that's a better.